Australia's East Coast is currently experiencing an energy crisis. In this video series, I'm going to start by explaining what the heck is actually going on, breaking down some of the facts to understand how we actually got here, and sharing about how this may impact you. Before we jump into understanding what went wrong over the last few weeks, let's first take a step back and understand how the national electricity market actually works in Australia. The National Electricity Market is a platform that allows electricity to be purchased from generators, such as coal, gas and renewables, by retailers like Origin, AGL, Ergon and PowerShop, for example. Retailers then sell that electricity onto businesses and households. The electricity is physically moved from generators to households via high voltage transmission lines around the country. Retailers buy electricity from generators through what's called the wholesale or the spot market before on-selling it to consumers. That's us. Because there are hundreds of generators and retailers in Australia, this process would be too complicated if they were left to manage those sales and transactions on their own. Because of this, we have a separate entity called the Australian Energy Market Operator, also referred to as AEMO, that manages this whole process. At the start of each day, all the power stations submit a bid for how much electricity they can provide for the day, in five minute intervals and at prices of their choosing. Every five minutes throughout the day, the market operator calculates how much electricity you need and then picks the power stations to meet that demand, from the cheapest to the most expensive offers. Once the operator has nominated enough power stations to meet the demand, the price of the last power station to be picked becomes a spot price. Anyone who doesn't get picked isn't allowed to sell their electricity in that time, which means they make no money in those five minutes. So, the more power stations we have participating in the market at that time, the cheaper the prices become, as companies need to get picked to make money. This spot price is what every generator who is selected to provide electricity is paid, regardless of what they originally offered. It's also the price that electricity retailers pay for us to use that power. The retailers recover the cost of those purchases from the tariffs that we pay on our electricity bills. This spot price is calculated for every state in the national electricity market. It changes every five minutes and it naturally trends up and down throughout the day based on the seasons, a balance of supply and demand and a number of other factors. Everything I've just described is what we would consider normal operation of the national electricity market. But what's been going on over the past few months and particularly the past few weeks is far from normal. Before we jump into understanding the energy crisis, there are two features of the national electricity market which you need to understand. Feature number one, price caps. Every now and again, the market experiences price spikes caused by a surge in demand, like everyone turning on their air conditioners during a heat wave, or caused by a drop in supply, like a power station outage or losing a transmission line in a severe weather event. Should the power prices stay too high for too long, the market operator can automatically step in and cap the price at $300 a megawatt hour. This is called administrative pricing. This feature was set up back when the market started in the 1990s to protect the market from events which caused unreasonably high prices for short durations, such as during a heat wave. This feature was not, however, set up to manage long duration events like the ones we've been seeing over the past few months. A market cap of exactly $300 was chosen because back when the market was set up, this is the price that a gas-fired power station would need to earn to recover the cost of their fuel when providing electricity. In Australia, gas power stations are typically only used to provide electricity when we are experiencing very high demand, such as in a heat wave, because they are very expensive to run. These power stations are often referred to as gas peakers because they're used in peak demand situations only. Therefore, in a heatwave event, when a price cap is used, the cap must be high enough for them to recover the cost of their gas fuel, and therefore incentivize them to turn on in the first place. If power stations like these don't turn on in those kinds of situations, we risk having a shortage of electricity. Now, a little bit of foreshadowing here, but over the past few weeks, the price of gas has been roughly four to five times higher than what it was back in the 90s when that market cap was calculated. That means that currently, a gas-fired power station would need to earn approximately $500 a megawatt hour, not $300, to recover the cost of the more expensive fuel. Feature number two, market directions. Because bidding in the national electricity market isn't compulsory for everybody, 
There are some situations where there may not be enough electricity being bid in the market to actually keep the lights on, putting the entire security of the system at risk. In events like these, the Australian energy market operator has the ability to intervene and to direct a power station to turn on, even if they weren't bidding in the first place, so long as they technically can do so. This is called a market direction. In this situation, the generator is still paid for electricity, but at a different and typically higher price than the wholesale price, and often a higher price than the administrative price cap. With these two features in mind, let's go back to the crisis. Over the last six months, the wholesale or spot price has been climbing at an astronomical rate. This high pricing is like what you'd see for a couple of days during a heat wave, not consistently for months. Come last week, the price for electricity had been just too high for just too long, triggering the administrative price cap of $300 a megawatt hour. Now, rather than do what it should normally do and settle down the market and recover after a few days, this administrative price cap triggered a cascading event of toppling dominoes that sent us into the energy crisis. What many don't realise though, is that these dominoes have been stacking for months, just waiting for something to topple them over. Why? Stay tuned for part two of this series, where we're going to take a closer look at what exactly happened last week and understand more clearly how we got here. I hope you've learned something new about how the electricity market works in Australia. If you have any questions, please throw them into the comments and I'll hope to answer them in my next videos. Thanks for watching Energy Explained.